All right, folks. Well, welcome. It's great to have you on uh, the call tonight. I know some people are calling in. Some people are, uh, most folks are doing it by way of WebEx. And uh, I get the easy job tonight of basically just welcoming everybody. And just um, in case I'm reading off of, uh, oh, there it is. Yes. Um, I'm going back and forth. I'm toggling between uh, uh, the screen and uh, what you guys are looking at. So there you go. We've got uh, some welcome messages here for the next few minutes. We're going to talk about roles of the boards and commissions. Uh, we're going to hear from some commissioners about why they serve, and we're going to talk about the application process because it's always we're always looking um, uh, for people to fill our spots. Uh, not that we're anxious for any of you to leave the commissions or boards, um, but uh, but it's good to talk about that. And then we're going to be looking at the um, the action steps the goals, the annual goals of what uh, the city council has uh, decided recently and uh, your role in that, how we all are going to work together. And then finally, you'll see where we're going to be doing some equity, equity training basics. Um, and, uh, and for those who haven't met uh, Kiara Zachary, who is our, uh, let's see if I get the title correct, equity manager, I think it's equity manager. If you haven't met her yet, well, you're going to meet her tonight. Uh, and then have some Q&A. So hopefully you guys will uh, fine tonight's uh, while we're not, you know, we're not physically together. Um, hopefully you'll still find it of value and uh, and find the bond here. Um, what I also wanted to just say, because um, I promised him I would, uh, there's one person that's missing that you, you normally would see in person, Roger Bergman. Uh, Roger's been on our commissions for a long time on the Open Space and Recreation Commission. In fact, maybe Bob, Bob Madison might might know how long he's been on. I can't remember, but Bob, uh, I'm sorry, but Roger uh, suffered a stroke uh, last last month. Uh, he's doing okay, but he called specifically and left a message for for Mr. Kirkshank and, and for me to let us know that he was not going to be able to make it tonight and how sorry he was. So how's that for commitment? Um, it's a high bar. I can I can uh, I can say that Roger's been on a very long time because he's been on longer than I have. So it's probably somewhere around 2000, maybe earlier. And yeah. he's been a valuable commission member the whole time that I've been involved. So here's hoping he recovers completely and uh, is active again. Well, he sounds really good uh, on the phone. Uh, so he, he will be back in uh, hopefully no time. But um, what I just wanted to say is uh, for uh, as part of my welcome here, whether it's your first year on a commission or board, or whether it's your 15th year, uh, you're in for a good program tonight. Uh, what's wonderful about this is this is where everyone gets to see the big picture. Uh, we get to see what we've accomplished and what we're trying to accomplish from the 10,000 foot view. Uh, but you also get to get it really up close, kind of like the tiny pixels of a, of a TV screen. Uh, you get to see the, 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 the details of the big picture as well. And all the work that you and so many others create to make our community special. So, um, and that's why I and the city council want to thank you. Uh, not just for being here tonight, but thank you for your service. Uh, we know that's a, an overused cliche, but it really means a lot to us. Uh, to say this past year has been a tough one for all of us is uh, an easy understatement. Uh, trying to create recommendations for the city council or produce a community program isn't easy on a regular basis, uh, but trying to do it when your Wi-Fi connection is unstable, you're, you know, you got dinner burning in the oven and that dog that you got for COVID just won't leave you alone. Uh, it, it creates some stress, right? Um, and how about some of our amazing student commission members? I know um, I saw at least one on here. I saw Destiny on here. Uh, you know, it's not easy to balance asynchronous schoolwork, apply for college, and be taken seriously with adults when your pesky sibling uh, keeps bugging you during commission meetings. So this is all kind of stressful, right? Uh, but good news, uh, the way things are going, things are looking up. Uh, there's definitely daylight, more daylight now, literally, there's more daylight now, it's getting warmer outside, more people are getting vaccinated, and long before 2021 is over, hopefully, we might have commission and city council meetings back in person. So, uh, congratulations for putting up with this new kind of stress. Uh, you've done a magnificent job, and you are still moving our community forward. So really from the, the bottom of our hearts, uh, for me and the city council, we wanna say thank you very much. Uh, so that's, uh, that's my job for the evening. And now I'm gonna hand it over to council member Harris. Thank you, mayor. Um, thank you everyone for joining tonight. Really, 
I wish we were in person, obviously, as he says, but we are still doing doing this. <laughs> um, first, I want to thank you for your service on the board commission. Um, as a previous member of the Human Rights Commission, the work and time you put into our commissions really help us do our job better and help our staff. So just thank you for all the time and effort you put into this. Um, you know, those Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, whatever it is, you could have free, you decide to serve your community this way. So thank you. Um, my part of this program, yes, is go over a welcome statement. Um, I was on the Human Rights Commission when we created the statement back in 2018. And I was doing a little bit of research, kind of just remembering when we did create it. And there was an article in the that started true about how controversial creating a welcome statement was in other communities. I know St. Cloud, Hudson had a huge bruja about what a welcoming statement could do. And someone said it could help cancel our free speech. I was confused by that statement. And it's knowing that this welcome statement kind of just makes our community just knows that wherever you are, wherever you come from, wherever your background is, this is a place for you. Um, you should be able to feel at home here. That this is not just, you know, you know, this is your this is your city too. And so, I'm not gonna read through it for, for Bayon, <laughs> but in a sense of just we embrace diversity and recognize the rights of individuals with their lives with dignity, dignity, free of discrimination, fear, violence, and hate. And the the words in this welcome statement, I think, just kind of imbues what we do as a city. Um, what you people do is in your commissions and boards to help, you know, the work you do help people feel more welcome here from parks, you know, rights commission, um, even zoning and planning is, you may think where it's a connection, but um, making sure our community is truly welcome for all of us um, to make sure we have services that reach out to all members of our community, no matter who you are, where you're, where you're at. So our welcome statement, um, kind of abuse of the values that we have. We'll talk a little bit later in the program. And just to make sure that, you know, this city is for everyone and not, you know, if you're a newbie, which for me, I've been here for, for three years now, I think, four years. Um, welcome is well, the, the working as welcome statement really kind of helps put those values in, into perspective of how, you know, I'm part of community as much as the person who's been here for 50 years is. So it's a great statement to have. I hope you read through it uh, throughout the night and um, really kind of keep the, that, that in your back of your head as you do the work that, on your board's commissions. Next on the list, I'm trying to think who is next on the agenda. Someone wants to help me out. It is. I, I can help Council you, Marie. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, uh, Council Member Rosenquist is going to talk about our values. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jillian Rosenquist, and um, I too started out on a board and commission. I started out um, on the Open Space and Recreation Commission, and um, and that was just a, a wonderful experience and way to get involved. And so I too thank you for your service and and know what it means to spend nights away from your family um, um, and your other um, uh, parts of your important parts of your life to in service of the city. Uh, we really appreciate uh, that time and all of the thought and and um, and dedication that that takes. Um, and these are uh, the values that um, we in the city um, and I we collectively the the staff, the council, and everybody on the boards and commissions try to make sure are reflected in in everything we do: uh, communication, community, inclusion, integrity respect, innovation, courage, and accountability. And I won't belabor it, but um, you know, these are these are living values and, and things that we really do try to translate into um, the service, the services uh, that we provide every day to the residents, businesses, and visitors to Golden Valley. And I will pass it off next, Mr. Cruikshank, who am I going to? Yes, uh, Council Member Faunus is going to talk about our vision statement. Thank you, Council Member Rosenquist. Uh, good evening, everybody, uh, and welcome. Uh, just to add my thanks to those that have already been expressed for all of your service. I, too, got my start on a board, the Board of Zoning Appeals, and uh, it was a, uh, a good experience that obviously led to other things. But um, I hope that all of you uh, will consider at some point in your uh, civic career uh, 
stepping up to serve on or running for at least city council. With that said, um, the vision statement that's before us this evening is familiar to a great many of you because you helped to write it. Golden Valley strives to creatively connect people and places, preserve and enhance community resources and nurture opportunities for all. I was uh, looking at this statement uh, earlier this afternoon, I was like, well, what more can I say? And as I started to think about all of the organizations and all of the energy that uh, helps to weave the fabric of our community together, um, I was like, well, where am I gonna stop? <laughs> it's, it's truly amazing what we have going on here in the city. And it, it starts with you folks, the boards, commissions, and special task forces that help the council in directing our time, attention, and treasure uh, to what is important to our citizens. And just to highlight one commission among all of the commissions and boards that are out there, and that's the Human Services Commission. And Denise and Aaron, I hope I'm not stealing any of your thunder, but since its inception, that commission has distributed $1,748,000 to support organizations in our community who in turn support our residents, uh, including uh, such uh, good organizations as PRISM, the Senior Community Service Home Program, and the Bridge for Youth, and there are many more. Uh, we also have an abundance of affiliated community organizations and partners uh, coming to mind very quickly, the Golden Valley Historical Society. Uh, it's um, an award-winning uh, organization that is really uh, stepping up to help preserve our history as a community. The Golden Valley Community Foundation, which is an offshoot of the envision process that we as a community went through in 2011. And just under their umbrella, just wanted to mention a few things. They um, help support the Sweet Potato Comfort Pie MLK event, the Pride Festival, Global Golden Valley, Market in the Valley, the Golden Valley Orchestra, and the Arts and Music Festival. And that's just a, a, a very short listing of everything that they're involved in. Then we're also working with the Golden Valley Reads and the Hennepin County Library here in Golden Valley to encourage reading with families and young people. The Golden Valley Blood Drives with the Memorial Blood Center, uh, which of course is a critical need uh, within our community. Beyond the Yellow Ribbon Quad Cities, where we connect uh, military personnel and their families with community services and the Golden Valley Business Council, where we as a city are reaching out to our business community to see where and how we can help strengthen them. And again, this is just uh, dipping the toe into uh, all the wonderful things that are going on in our city. And then finally, I just have to mention our own city departments. Um, we have the police and fire departments with their public safety open houses, their citizen academies, uh, and their neighborhood, neighborhood watch programs. We have park and rec programs and the leagues, including, of course, the beautiful new Brookview Community Center. So as you can see, um, the work just goes on and on uh, in terms of reaching our vision of connecting people, enhancing our community and nurturing opportunities for all. And um, I find myself uh, very fortunate to be on council uh, and uh, very fortunate to be in this community. Um, I have really come to value it. So with that, I will pass the baton on to my colleague, Council Member Sandberg. Thank you, and thank you all for being here today. I'll add my thanks to what everyone else has said. I also was on a commission before I was elected to council. I was on the Open Space and Recreation Commission, and I see a lot of members of the OSRC on, on the call tonight. So 
Uh, I want to just take a minute to thank everyone for being here tonight because I think that this is. I, I always look forward to this meeting every year. It's a time when we all can come together and look at the ways um, our work kind of overlaps and who's doing what and really gain an understanding of how we all work together between council and staff and the boards and commissions. So thank you all for taking the time to be here tonight and thank you for your service on on boards and commissions. Uh, I am going to read the mission statement. So the city of Golden Valley delivers high quality responsive services to ensure the community remains a vibrant and welcoming environment in which to live, work and play. So tonight as we're kind of talking about our work and going through the rest of this meeting, I think that it's really um, helpful to have in mind this mission statement because this really, this is what we're all working toward. This is a, what we're all always trying to achieve together. Um, and so I think that this is just kind of helpful perspective going into the meeting to think about, you know, how how your commission and your service on your commission um, really contributes to the to the mission of the city and delivering those high quality and responsive services, and really just keeping Golden Valley a really great place to live. So I will keep it short and leave it there. But thank you so much for being here tonight and for your services on on commissions and boards. Thank you, uh, Council Member uh, Sandberg, and thank you, Mayor and Council, for uh, kicking off our meeting tonight. Reviewing those statements and, and hearing from you is, is important. It helps set the tone and, and set uh, reaffirm the, the direction. Uh, these statements, um, and, and again, as pointed out, most of you may know, are, are newer. In the last uh, two, three, four years, these, these statements um, have been created. Um, and and uh, have not existed in any form prior to this. So uh, thank you again, Mayor and Council, for that and and for your leadership. And I would be remiss too if I did not um, just throw in a, a thanks here. Um, the the service that you do provide is invaluable and and necessary to good governance and and to the the democratic form of government that we that we uh, live under. And so we appreciate um, our citizen members and the input that you provide and the service that you provide through these boards and commissions. I uh, would like to review the, the roles of, of both the, the council and the board and commission, uh, but just say a couple of things first. Number one, um, the underlying um, message here, the, the common theme or the thread is that we're all part of a big team. We're part of a big team, hopefully mostly rowing in the same direction or a, a, a similar general direction. And so the, the purpose of this meeting is to convey back and forth um, kind of where things are at and the overall direction that we're, we're going and, and the, the roles and responsibilities of this, this massive team in doing so. Uh, this is a wonderful meeting that like the statements before did not exist prior to, I believe this is our fourth annual joint meeting. So those of you that have been around longer know that. Uh, for those of you that don't know that, this is a newer get together for us. And Council Member Faunist, um, sorry to call you out, but you, this was your idea and it's, uh, it's become a reality. And, and it's very healthy for us all to get together and, and to see each other and, and discuss, um, again, the overall all direction. Uh, so with that, uh, I will move into the review of, of roles here. And this is very high level, very brief, but the city council, their duties are to create policy makers. As you hear, they're elected officials and policy makers. And so their job is to create policies and through those policies provide overall direction, overall direction to our staff, to our boards and commissions, and share that with our constituents, with, um, with our residents, with our community. So we all have a, a general idea of, of where we are going. Um, so that is that is where they spend their time and effort, or should be, and and do, and but also the very important role of acting as a liaison between the city government structure 
and the general public, um, making sure that we're, we're, we're carrying out things consistent with the values of the community and issues that, uh, on issues that matter the most to our community. And then, so the board and commission duties uh, and responsibilities fall in line, much like city staff, where we work at the direction of the city council. And that's why the annual meeting that the council has every year to create that direction or affirm that direction is so very important. And so we need to carry out uh, those duties as, as given by the council. And we are all helpers. We're all, again, on that team helping the council achieve the, the goals that, that they prescribe to us. So those are our general duties and roles. Um, what is absent on here are the city staff's duties and roles, but, but it, it, it falls in line with, with again, the, the board and commission. I do wanna point out very quickly, and we'll get to uh, introductions with all of the board members uh, in one of our next uh, segments here. But we have our full uh, management team with us tonight, our, our senior staff. And by senior, I, I don't necessarily mean old. I just mean that they're on the, the, uh, the, the management team. And, uh, and liaison. So there are uh, some liaisons who are not necessarily on the management team who are with us tonight as well. And we're very fortunate to have the, the wonderful staff that we do. We put together this flow chart just so again folks could get a bigger picture view of, of how things work again generally speaking but in January the city council meets at its annual session to uh, determine our action steps our policy initi initiatives for the coming year and we'll get into that a little bit more later uh, in February at this session we we share what those cues are from the council to everyone so we're all in in lockstep over the next several months boards and commissions not all but most boards and commissions create a work plan and present that work plan to the city council and uh, then in theory through may and december we all work and we 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 get we get those uh tasks completed um, there's one deviation here i think worthy of pointing out and that is that if there's a, a policy initiative that a board or a commission would like to pursue and it's um, not on the the list that the council has created um, there is an opportunity for the council to consider adding that and the council can discuss that um, in march april or may when the annual work plans are presented to to the city council so again, a, a very brief, uh, high overview of, of how work flows in the, in the city. So with that, I will stop and we will uh, hear from our boards and commissions. Um, and we have a designated person, in some cases uh, the chair, in some cases the vice chair, and in some cases someone else, who will introduce the board members, um, give a very brief, uh, uh, outline of, of the, their mission or purpose of the board. And, and if there's some other thing that they would like to add, they're welcome to do so, a highlight or, or whatever is appropriate. So if we could please start with the BZA and uh, Sophia Guinness. Hi all, my name is Sophia Guinness and I am the vice chair of our board of zoning appeals or BZA as we affectionately call it. And our job is to review variances from our fellow residents and businesses that want to build or modify properties that aren't fully in line with the rules. And you know, I think we get maybe the prize for being the wonkiest sounding board, but really we're doing things that really affect uh, our, our fellow citizens uh, in our in our in our city, and I can guarantee you, everybody that comes to us to ask for an appeal cares very deeply about what we have to say, and they do have the option to appeal to the city council if they disagree with us. But we really try to work with everybody that comes to us to see what can work for them. So we kind of see if they have a special circumstance that would warrant uh, a variance, and you know, it's it's it's. A little bit technical, but it's really fun, and it's actually really accessible once you get into it. It sounds kind of like wonky, but it's it's not it's not too bad. 
And I'll give a couple examples uh, so that people get a better idea of what our work entails. So say you're a resident of our city and you have a house and your house was built a long time ago and you bought it and you wanna make an addition. Well, city, city code has changed and all of a sudden your addition and your house itself is what we call non-conforming. It means that uh, you have to actually come to talk to us um, because you maybe you're too close to the property line already uh, with city code. And so, you know, we'll work with somebody to see if, see if that makes sense and fits with the character of the city and everything like that. Um, you do, if you are one of our members, you do have to have, feel comfortable kind of saying no sometimes. Uh, you know, people, people come to us with things that maybe don't match exactly what we want to do uh, with, uh, with uh, our, our city values and whatnot. But we, uh, there's all sorts of fun technical um, challenges that people face. Like maybe you have two roads, your house is on two roads. So you, the rules that apply to your front yard are actually your backyard and whatnot. So, uh, we have a really cool uh, folks with us. I know, I think uh, Chris is on the call with us tonight and a few others that uh, would have joined if they could. And that's kind of our little summary of what we're up to. Oh, wonderful, thank you, Sophia. Um, I think I'm up next, Mr. Kochank. Yes, you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Council member Rosenquist. Thank you. Hi, uh, yes, I'm the uh, council liaison to the civil service commission and also the chair of uh, the police task force, which is in the process of creating a new commission. So the city uh, council passed a resolution um, last fall um, deciding to uh, uh, segue from a civil service commission model, which has been a uh, statutorily uh, derived uh, citizen involvement in the um, in in uh, Golden Valley Police um, uh, human resources, essentially um, overseeing the uh, roster of uh, uh, generally sworn officers and the hiring of sworn officers, um, and we're trans. Uh, transforming from that model in an effort that is very much in line with our deep commitment as a council as a city to diversity and equity work um, arising out of um, the great work that was done by our rising tides task force and um, in response to i think uh, a community interest to have a deeper and more modern involvement in um, in a police community relations in golden valley and so I can't tell you exactly what this commission is going to be or what its name is or what its mission or its bylaws are, because those are being formed by the task force at this time. And we hope to have that work completed by late May or early June. But I can tell you that um, the uh, uh, task force members are deeply committed to having a commission that is involved in things like um, the hiring and retention and diversifying of our uh, police force, um, uh, uh, creating um, uh, mutual understanding, uh, um, uh, a place for difficult conversations, um, a place to uh, deeply look at and um, understand the data um, that, um, uh, that is uh, generated by public safety responses, and um, really challenges uh, the uh, systemic racism that that all of us live in in our in our society. So uh, this this kind of work uh, is deeply rooted in uh, the values and the mission um, of the city of Golden Valley to uh, provide the best services for our residents and to be responsive to their uh, wants. So we look forward to telling you all what this commission is and what it will be doing uh, in the next few months. And so please look for opportunities at several points to be involved in that conversation. And we're developing those community engagement uh, opportunities and models right now. Thank you, Councilmember Rosenquist. Um, move on to the human right, or wait, wait a second here. Are we out of order? Did I miss one? I believe I did. Yes. The, uh, the environmental commission, uh, Scott, sorry about that. Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, good evening. My name is Scott Seiss and I am the chair of the environmental commission. And as you'll see on the slide, um, there are also a number of other esteemed fellow commission members that also work on the, uh, the various recommendations that the commission makes. 
So uh, quite simply, our commission works on advising and making recommendations to the city council on matters related to the environment and human health. So on a month to month basis, we really have a broad array of different projects. Everything from providing advice on surface water management to looking at pollinator projects and native plantings. In a given month, we may be developing recommendations on Golden Valley nature areas or even looking at uh, organic recycling. So really um, a lot of diversity of projects, but, uh, but all coming back to that, uh, that key concept of what is affecting the environment and human health in Golden Valley. So thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Um, next up is Human Rights Commission and uh, either Kyle or Chris. Good evening, this is Kyle. Um, I'm the chair of the Golden Valley Human Rights Commission and you can see a list of our current commissioners on the screen. The HRC advises the city council on human rights, helps build community by creating opportunities uh, for dialogue on various human rights issues and we sponsor and promote uh, different types of human rights educational opportunities. Uh, our commission has included seven community members plus, plus two youth members who live or work or should be live or attend high school in the Golden Valley area and our youth members have really provided a very important perspective uh, for our commission. Some of the work that we've done, for example, has been sponsoring the Bill Hobbs Human Rights Award, sponsoring an annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Creative Contest for Youth, sponsoring educational dialogue and event, uh, events, a topic such as why treaties matter, uh, combating xenophobia and anti-Semitism, immigration and impartial policing, voters' rights, et cetera, um, sponsoring event speakers and community participation, and then partnering with other nearby city commissions and organizations on various community educational events. Uh, this year we have a really unique and exciting opportunity in that we are part of a transformation as well um, into a new commission that combines our efforts and the efforts of the Rising Tides Task Force, which has been focused on providing input to the city staff and the city council on issues related to equity, inclusion, and diversity. So really bringing together the best of both the Human Rights Commission and the Rising Tides Task Force. So we're really looking forward to that transformation. Thanks. Thank you, Kyle. Um, next on the list is Human Services Commission. And uh, I believe, Denise, you're going to speak. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm Denise Lemire Anderson. I have the privilege of being the chair of the um, Golden Valley Human Services Commission. Um, and Council Member Fonest did a really nice job of teeing up um, who we are and what we do. Um, we plan and hold fundraisers and events to raise money uh, to meet human services needs in our community. Um, and we really pride ourselves on um, being able to uh, provide money to um, a variety of nonprofits that serve um, the youngest residents of Golden Valley to those who might need diapers all the way to um, our senior citizens and everything in between. Um, we uh, really raise money in um, a couple of distinct ways. Um, first, we um, are very privileged to receive um, a portion of pull tab revenue, which is a significant portion of our annual budget. And we are very grateful to all of our friends and neighbors who like to play pull tabs at our local watering holes. We also um, hold two events annually. Um, we hold a Greens Classic, which is a golf and lawn bowling event um, that typically is held in September. Um, we are making some changes to that event in uh, 2021 due to um, some pandemic response. We also um, have our biggest fundraiser, which is Run the Valley, um, traditionally held in the spring, which is a uh, 10K, 5K run and walk. Um, it also includes a kids fun run. Um, again, traditionally that event happens in April. Um, this year, in order to um, try to drive some in-person participation, uh, we have moved the event to September 11th and hope to see all of you there uh, running, walking, and participating. Um, we typically have four to 500 people participate in that event. 
Um, and the final way that we raise money is through the generosity of our citizens who respond to an annual solicitation letter, um, which we uh, send out each year around the holidays. Um, so that's kind of uh, what we do. Who we are is listed here on the screen. And um, I'm really privileged to have um, a great group of commissioners who I get to work with. And I'm biased, but I think we have the best staff liaison um, in Brian Erickson. So we just have a fantastic group that's kind of running on all cylinders. And we are actively working on planning our uh, 2021 events um, so that we can raise uh, the most money possible to uh, donate to charity. Wonderful, thank you, Denise. Uh, next up, we have the Open Space and Recreation Commission. I believe uh, Bob Madison is gonna speak. There we go, I'm unmuted, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm the uh, Vice Chair of the Open Spaces and Recreation Commission, and you can see our membership uh, on the screen. We do have a student member Adela Dami from the Hopkins district, uh, and she's a, a wonderful input. We like to describe our commission as the fun commission. We get to do things that are, uh, make everybody's life better by having fun. And I didn't realize until today when I looked at the mission statement of the city that we're in charge of the last word, but not the least important word of the mission statement, the word play. We get to work with people getting to play. Uh, let me read you the um, uh, the um, purpose statement of the Open Spaces and Recreation Commission and make a couple comments. The purpose of the Open Spaces and Recreation Commission is to advise the City Council on issues and opportunities for recreational activities, park improvements, trails and bikeways, open spaces in native area, uh, nature areas, and the Brookview operations. So if it's outside, we usually have something to do with it. Uh, to give you an example of how we advise the city council, just very recently, we spent a fair amount of time on the uh, proposed dog ordinance uh, and through staff, our recommendations uh, were conveyed to the city council. And that uh, ordinance is now in the process of uh, being considered and hopefully adopted. Uh, in addition, this commission makes recommendations to update the park and recreation section of the city's comprehensive plan and review park and recreation policies and operational procedures. It also provides input on operational budgets and the capital improvement plan for parks and open spaces. And in this regard, we work very closely with the park and rec staff uh, led by Rick Bruno and the entire staff on a whole variety of issues that have to do with our parks, our recreation activities, uh, what goes on at Brookview, the golf course, uh, a whole number of things. Uh, finally, the commission advises the city council on cooperative agreements with other private and public agencies and groups. Uh, we have a great collaborative arrangement with a number of groups particularly Three Rivers Park District, uh, and where we have a um, arrangement with them in the city of Robbinsdale and Sohockey Park. Uh, the um, Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board, we've be recently been working more with them on opportunities at, uh, at Worth Park in our uh, youth sports organizations, which are outstanding and are a great supplement to the recreational activities for youth in Golden Valley. Talking about Little League, soccer, girls softball, those organizations. So that's what we do. We have a lot of fun doing it. Good stuff. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, Planning Commission, uh, either Ron Blum or Ro Lauren Pockel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cruikshank. Uh, members of the council and all present. I'm Ron Blum and I'm the chair of the Golden Valley Planning Commission. Special thanks uh, for our commissioners who I know put in long hours and, and have those thoughtful discussions on important matters for the city. The purpose of the Planning Commission is to advise, recommend, and assist the city council in matters relating to planning and growth of the city, including issues relating to social, economic, and physical environments. The Planning Commission recommends 
council approval or denial of proposed land use changes, taking into consideration land use ordinances and the comprehensive plan. This past year, we're especially proud to have approved the land use application that helps to welcome the Academy of Whole Learning, which is a nonprofit school that specializes in providing educational opportunities for children with autism. And that, does that conclude your report, report, Ron? Thank you. Yes. Very good. Thank you. And thank you all. Thank you for um, your summaries and, and uh, providing some background. It's very informative and I think an educational for us to uh, each hear what, what the other boards and members and commissioners are, are doing, what the roles and responsibilities are. So that kind of uh, cross pollination, cross education is very value, valuable. And I think it provides an opportunity to see where there, there might be opportunities to, to work together. And we have had that where different uh, uh, opportunities have come up where uh, a commission has worked with another commission on, on a particular topic. So thank you um, for your presentations. We're gonna move into our next segment here, which is called Why I Serve. And I'm gonna ask our human resources director, Kirsten, Santalisi's to uh, tee up this item, please. Hi, good evening. As Tim said, I'm Kirsten Santalisis. I'm the Human Resources Director with the city. I'm also the current staff liaison for the uh, Human Rights Commission and the co-liaison uh, for the Rising Tides Task Force. Um, many of you probably know that one of the goals of this meeting was to share with our community at large who you all are and what you do. Um, and now that we've heard a bit about the purpose and the work of the city boards and commissions, we uh, get to hear from some of the wonderful fo folks here about why they serve. Um, the Why I Serve segment really began as a way to shine light on the community members who volunteer their time and efforts to um, really uh, make this such a wonderful city. And we hope that by sharing these stories, um, we will inspire other community members to serve in the future. So with that, I will introduce the um, the first uh, commissioner, and that is Don Hill with the Environmental Commission. Thank you, Kirsten. My, as Kirsten said, my name is Don. And for over twenty years, I'm one of the, I am one of the the uh, founding members of it. it. It came as a result of the Swamp Committee Surface Water Management Plan back in the day. And one of the recommendations of that was to have an ongoing environmental commission. And it piqued my curiosity. I am not, I am an accountant by trade. So it, um, environment, environment and um, environmental concerns are more of an avocation than a vocation. That isn't to say that there aren't people on our commission that do make their living, some working with the DNR or with civil engineers, um, or I think we had a U of M person uh, as well. So I serve because the Environmental Commission is a nice meshing of my interest in environmental issues, as well as government and policy setting. What I like, what I like is that the Environmental Commission is not the activist group. We don't go around and do um, stenciling that um, this, this gutter leads to the, to the creek, or we don't plant lilac bushes, or we don't personally go out and um, pull out buckthorn. Some of us do that on our own time, but that isn't the commission's job. As Scott had said, we uh, recommend policy to the city council. We have worked on chickens. We have worked on um, organics and recycling. We have worked on the comprehensive plan and resilience. So why I serve is I would never have access to have input in these kinds of um, events and, and needs without being on a board and commission. Why should you serve you, the great you out there? It's a, it's a great chance to participate and have a voice. Our commission over the years has had different kinds of members, some who didn't want the city to be so involved in every little thing. So it isn't like we're all tree huggers. There are different points of view and all are welcome. Um, I, what I would like to say is sometimes you go out on social media and the haters just say that, you know, the city council is out after their own agenda and they aren't listening to people. 
And I find that absolutely not to be true. City council and, and city council members and the mayor have very, very part-time salaries for practically full-time jobs. And when I work and when we offer perspectives as the Environmental Commission, they are listening, they are hearing, and then they are deciding what they think is best, which may not be what we or other people want, but there isn't animosity there. It is really everybody trying to work together to make Golden Valley as good as it can be. So if people would like a voice like that, the Environmental Commission is a great way to tap in to um, a city commission. Thank you. Thank you so much, Don. Very much appreciate that perspective and you sharing your, your, um, your background. Uh, the next is um, Destiny Nathan, and Destiny is one of the youth members on the Human Rights Commission. Hi, so I'm Destiny, as Kirsten said, and the reason why I serve on the Human Rights Commission is at first when I was given the opportunity to join a commission, I was looking through and something that's really important to me is human rights, well, obviously, and empathy specifically. And as being a, a person just in the world with everything, all the bad things happening, especially as a teenager, it's really easy to feel helpless and that you can't really help people around you. So joining the Human Rights Commission, I was able to help people directly within my community and see that impact without it being so overwhelming. And it's given me an outlet to practice my empathy to, through the different projects and things that we sponsor. And I would highly recommend joining the Human Rights Commission if you've ever felt like I did. If you ever felt powerless that you can't really help people or make that connection, I would really recommend joining it. Thank you so much, Destiny. And as your liaison, I can definitely attest to the fact that you have made a huge difference. Um, next uh, is the Human Services Commission, Aaron Black. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, uh, thank you for letting me uh, participate and, and talk a little bit about, about why I serve. I'm the uh, vice chair of the Human Services Commission. I've, I've been on the commission now, I believe, for about five years now. And uh, the reason I serve, it's, it's actually very simple. Uh, the reason I serve is to help and um, you really help people, in particular, less fortunate, need uh, human services. And, um, you know, our, our commission is unique in that, you know, we can, you know, help raise money for organizations that, that provide those human services. And, um, you know, this past year has been, been so tough for so many people in our community. And, and to be able to make a, a direct impact by raising money for those that are less fortunate and really need help, um, you know, essential uh, help with, um, you know, it could be food. It could, like Denise was talking about, you know, it could be diapers. It could be, you know, everything that's essential. And the Human Services Commission uh, gives me an opportunity to to better connect with the community and to and to help raise money, money that's very important for these uh, organizations to provide essential human services to the Golden Valley community. And um, I'm very I'm very thankful you know, to have this opportunity. The City Council has been great in, in working with us. We have a um, you know a great uh, staff liaison. Um, our, our City uh, Council liaison Kimberly has been great, and um, it's also fun too. We have. Uh, a couple of events that, that we hope that Denise was talking about. Um, it's great to volunteer and connect better in the community. We have a lot of people show up for Run the Valley. Um, you know, not so much as last year it was a virtual event, but typically it's a, it's a great opportunity to better connect with the community and, and raise money for people that, that need help in our community. Um, you know, why I think uh, someone should consider uh, joining, a community member should uh, consider joining a commission. Um, you know, I think this was said earlier, but it's it's so true. It gives you a voice. It gives you an opportunity to make an impact and 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 help uh, you know shape to some extent uh, the, the direction of the city and help people within the community. So um, I'm thankful I have that opportunity, and and um, I'm pretty confident if um, if you're considering uh, joining and volunteering for a commission, you'll you'll feel the same way. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Next, from our Open Space and Recreation Commission, we have Linda Lyndon Weiswerda. Oh, no.
Lyndon, unfortunately, we have some um, interesting sound coming through. We've had this issue once before um, on one of our task force meetings and the individual did have to disconnect and reconnect. Did you want to try that? Okay, sounds great. And then um, as we wait for Lyndon to reconnect, perhaps we um, can move to uh, Rich Baker with the Planning Commission. Thank you, Kirsten. I've served on the uh, Planning Commission for the past almost eight years, and before that served on the Environmental Commission for 12 years, where I was a founding member along with Don. <clears throat> I think we all agree that the Golden Valley is a terrific place to call home. Serving on our city's commissions has given me an opportunity to be a participant in the city's future, especially the Planning Commission, which has such a, a, a profound influence on the city's future. It also has allowed me to contribute my skills and professional knowledge to making the city a better place and personally to advocating for the for issues that are important to me. I hope you'll consider lending your time and skills to the city by applying for a commission or board of interest to you. If you do, you'll find yourself working with caring thoughtful, committed members of our community, learning how a forward-looking city operates, and we are really an exceptional city in that way, and having the satisfaction of knowing that you're helping make the world a better place for all of us. Thanks. Thank you, Rich. I think Lyndon may be back with us. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, fantastic. All right. Sorry about that. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Lyndon Weisford. I'm serving on the Open Space and Recreation Commission. This is my first term um, that I'm still finishing out. Um, I serve on the commission for um, a lot of different reasons, but I think it can be summed up by the shared experience that many of us had this last year when so many of our options to do things and see people were taken away. It's that parks and open space is the front porch and back porch and social space and civic infrastructure of our community. Without it, it's a bunch of houses and roads and streets, um, but it's not necessarily a place you run into your neighbors um, and get to know people. And for me, when uh, my family moved here recently, it, the place that we first met other people was our neighborhood park. Um, and I serve on the commission to make sure that um, that that experience is available to others um, and that it's well regarded for its environmental value, its social value, um, and, and its civic importance uh, in our, our community for clean air, clean water, and that that uh, community space. Um, I think if, if you're interested in serving on a commission, and of course we are, I'm sure all the commissions are fun, but as Bob said, we're the most fun. Um, but if you've ever had uh, either a fantastically wonderful experience with a loved place, uh, a natural space or a park, um, or you haven't, uh, had that experience in a park or open space, then I think you should consider um, volunteering some time with our commission and make sure that Golden Valley's parks and open spaces and trails um, do serve that need for the next generations. Um, the last part of, of the job of being a commissioner that I, I truly enjoy um, is getting to advocate for the fantastic parks and rec staff that work here in Golden Valley. Um, who, if you are unaware, just won a national uh, award for their fantastic uh, virtual recreation programming this last year, one of only five communities in the country to get a gold medal award. And one of, and the, the Golden Valley Parks and Rec Department um, won that wholeheartedly deserved uh, recognition for their nimble thinking and quick programming to give those of us stuck at home, especially with children, fun things to do. Um, uh, and so that's that's really a privilege of serving on the commission, but it's also, I think uh, uh, that role of ambassador is an, an important one to recognize um, for the staff and on behalf of the staff who do fantastic work day in and day out. Thank you so much, Lyndon. And thank you all for providing such a wonderful overview of all the hard work that goes into each of your boarding commissions. Uh, Tim, you can go ahead and move to the next slide. 
Um, one of the items that was uh, missing from the workflow timeline um, is the application process. Um, and even though um, folks can apply to serve on a boarding commission at any time throughout the year, really um, we do appointments and reappointments in May each year. So um, this year we know we're, we're collecting applications as always, and this year we'll collect applications through March 31st. And then we'll start to schedule interviews with the city council during the month of April so that we can make our appointments and reappointments um, for all of our board and commissions um, at the end of April and into May. Um, if you have um, or anyone has any questions about the board and commission application process, please head to our website. Um, there is a screenshot of the um, what the website looks like um, for the, the board and commission application process page. Um, you can submit an application form through this website. You can also um, give us a call or email if you have any questions, um, and we'll be sure to uh, put you in contact with maybe a representative from the commission. Um, maybe you'll hear from me directly, um, but we'll make sure to get any questions um, answered uh, about um, any boarding commission or the pr uh, application process. So that wraps up, I think, the um, first part of our meeting, and we're pretty close to being on time, so I'm very proud of all of us. Uh, thank you again all for, uh, for sharing uh, about the work that you all do um, behind the scenes that maybe not everybody knew um, to, make, to make us run. And I will turn it back over to Tim. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. That was uh, wonderful to to hear. And and for those of you that that may not know, if we weren't clear, there's an external audience as well that uh, may have been listening in. We had encouraged members of the community who may be interested in in learning more about boards and commissions to listen in, and and they're welcome to to stay with us for the rest of the evening. Uh, but that first part of the of the meeting was. Um, was in part directed at, at that audience as well. Thank you. So let's let's move into um, the second part of the meeting. And, and just to remind everybody, it, it's going to consist of going through uh, the 2021 Council action steps. And then we're going to have uh, Kiara do some uh, equity training basics. We'll have a, a Q and A, and then depending on how things go, we will adjourn, uh, and then we have it scheduled to be no later than 8 p.m. Just so everybody can kind of have a, a targeted end end time. So, if if I could, I would uh, like to walk through uh, what the uh, the vision or the uh, screen before you, and we refer to it as the pyramid of success, obviously because it's shaped like a pyramid. And I know it may seem a little bit hokey, but it helps us maybe organize our, our thoughts. And, and in one quick visual, it, it sort of sums up um, what we've got going on and what we, uh, where we plan to go for the, the coming year. So you've heard about the vision and the mission. You've heard about the values and, and the welcome statement. I, I do want to spend a little bit of time. And, and just so you know, this is maybe going to be 10 minutes worth, so, so don't, don't fear. Um, but I, I want to just point out that uh, we we uh, talk a lot about the, the action steps as determined by the council from year to year, but I don't want us to forget that we have many core services that we provide, basic services that we provide in addition to uh, the, the other initiatives and projects uh, as determined by the council. And this year in particular, just like the rest of the world, providing those basic and core services had uh, an extra twist to it. And I'm very pleased and proud of the community, the council and the staff for the, the adjustment. Uh, the city of Golden Valley overall, and, and specifically the city government was a very early uh, adapter and adjuster to what came our way in March. And um, we took a, a very uh, aggressive stance around uh, being uh, protective of the health of our community and of our employees. And so we're very uh, proud of that. As the mayor pointed out, we have uh, hope and optimism for 
uh, the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, so we're starting to discuss what, um, what uh, you know, normal is gonna look like um, over the next several months. In addition to that, we have departments, uh, uh, the department heads who have internal things that they see done that need to be worked on that, that, uh, that happen as well. So we'll move into maybe the, the heart of this discussion, which is the uh, organ starting with the organizational priorities. Uh, a few years back, the city council created four columns to, to categorize the areas that they wanted to focus. And the four columns were strategic development and redevelopment, as you see here, effective governance, infrastructure maintenance and enhancement, and then financial wellness. About two years ago, it became obvious that we needed a fifth column, and that fifth column is uh, community affairs. And we'll talk under initiatives and projects and action steps what we mean or, or what specifics um, uh, fall under those columns. So under strategic development and redevelopment, uh, we have ongoing um, initiatives and projects around and in the areas of affordable housing and creating a plan with that. We are in the midst of a downtown study, a task force, a citizen task force has been appointed by the council and, and led by uh, council member Rosenquist to, to study our entire downtown and try to put together a game plan and a strategy for what its long-term future may look like. And our downtown is defined as the four quadrants around the Golden Valley Road and Winnetka. Uh, we have a facility study task force that um, for all practical purposes is related to the downtown study. Uh, another citizen appointed task force uh, also chaired by, um, my, my bad, the facility study task force is led by the uh, by council member uh, Rosenquist. We, we don't have a downtown study task force, sorry about that. But, um, but we have a facility study task force that works hand in hand with the downtown study and um, trying to determine what the long-term game plan is for the city's aging uh, facilities, especially um, City Hall, Public Works, and uh, Public Safety. But the number one uh, priority for uh, by the council, in, uh, in, and it shows here under the action step, is continuing our HRA initiatives. The city council has been dedicated to uh, uh, improving uh, housing and uh, economic development in our community. And in doing so has for the first time as an HRA levied dollars. Many cities around us for years have uh, very active HRAs and, uh, and have budgets. Our city uh, for various reasons has not had a budget or a levy. And so for the first time in 2021, uh, we now have that. And in addition to that, we will be hiring a dedicated housing and economic development manager to help uh, carry out the, the various action items uh, in that category. Uh, moving over to the next column of effective governance, there are a number of items here. I'm not gonna talk uh, in, uh, specifically about each of these, although they're all very important, but um, the council did agree that in addition to carrying on and, and carrying out these initiatives and projects, and especially the, I'm gonna point out the police um, commission task force, that's the other one that council member Rosenquist is, is leading. Um, we, they agreed that the number one priority to, to focus on under this column is a look at and, and a study the possible establishment of, his, of a historic preservation Commission. I think our community is learning that over time, uh, we have uh, buildings, structures, neighborhoods that uh, that are meaningful and uh, they may be worth preserving. And so, looking into this further to determine if it makes sense for our city to create uh, this additional commission was the number one priority for the city council under this column. Under uh, infrastructure maintenance and enhancement, we have a number of, of large and ongoing infrastructure projects that, that we've been working on and will continue 
to work on, but the number one priority for the council was continue our transit initiatives um, and specifically around uh, bus rapid transit and uh, Highway 55. But, and, uh, but there are a number of, it's a broader subject and a broader topic that includes our, our bike and pedestrian um, uh, uh, paths and, and um, BLRT and, and so forth. So continue our transit initiatives was the number one priority. Under financial wellness, we will continue to focus on our debt reduction as well as focus on working with uh, the state and try to amend the fiscal disparities formula. The fiscal disparities formula right now uh, does not maybe work in our favor the best that it could. And uh, we're going to try to figure out if there's a way uh, to keep more of the, the tax value uh, and, and therefore the tax revenue in our community. That's what we would like to do. That effort is being led by Council Member Juanis. But the number one priority under financial wellness as we uh, start to complete our pavement management program, our pavement management program has been going on for 25, maybe 30 years. That uh, will be wrapping up in the next three years, I believe, up in the northwest quadrant of the city. We need to move into the next phase of our infrastructure renewal, and that is what we're calling our infrastructure renewal plan. We need to get our, our game plan in order and our financing uh, worked out for what that next uh, phase will, will be. And then lastly, under community affairs, we have a number of, again, significant uh, tasks uh, and initiatives that are uh, being worked on. And again, I'm not going to uh, talk about each of those, but I will drop down to the, the, the high, highest priority for the council, the number one priority, and that is continue our, our DE&I work, which is a very uh, broad umbrella. But I will say that, that that work is the foundation really of almost all of these other things that we're working on. The city and city staff, uh, and we're gonna ask you as uh, board members and commissioners to think about uh, in everything that we do and how we do it, how we can include uh, our DE&I work and to make uh, significant progress. The city of Golden Valley is committed to this work. The city of Golden Valley wants to take meaningful actions and steps. Um, and and we, we take it uh, very seriously. So, uh, and that maybe concludes uh, the overview of the city council's uh, direction for 20. 21 and it's uh, maybe a good segue, I think, into the next uh, part of our presentation this evening or our discussion this evening. And so with that, I would like to introduce Kiara Zachary. So Kiara, welcome. K Kiara is a, a new newer em employee for the city of Golden Valley. Again, the city council was very committed to to our DE&I work, and we knew that we couldn't do all that needed to be done without a dedicated employee. And so we're very, very proud, very pleased to have hired Kiara, and she is leading our effort. Um, and maybe with that introduction, Kiara, I will hand it over to you and you can take it away. Uh, thank you, Tim, and um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm really happy to be here and uh, have the opportunity to speak with you all today. Um, as stated before, I am the Equity and Inclusion Manager, and um, what I've been doing at the city these last five or six months is really um, getting very close with these two documents that we're going that I'm going to um, touch on quickly. Um, but to ground myself in um, the work that's already happened in Golden Valley, and to make sure that um that we are planting roots for a very uh long trajectory in diversity equity and inclusion work um and i'm here with you all tonight uh to um establish some some common language and to establish some sort of some common understandings about what that can look like and how we can all um 
be we all have a part in and are responsible to um, uh, the commitment of diversity, equity, and inclusion that the city has. Um, and and the two reasons, the main reasons why uh, we are accountable to those things is one because of the welcome statement. Um, and and in, in its first line, the welcome statement says that the city of Golden Valley believes in and stands for the values of social equity, inclusion, and justice. Um, beyond personal reasons, I um, in finding this work, right, um, that this is also why I'm committed to doing the, the sort of work that I am. Um, but that also means that in everything that the city touches, uh, we should also be um, we should also be expressing these values. And then secondly is um, the, the equity plan. I, I believe in 2017, um, the city went through the GARE process. GARE is an organization, it's the Government Alliance for Racial Equity. And out of that process, they created an equity plan that has four major commitments. Um, and these commitments are impartial public service, inclusive community engagement, fair and equitable hiring practices, and an infrastructure that supports and advances equity. Um, so in my you know five months here, what I've been doing is really examining how do we um, have these four commitments become um, the very foundation for all of our decision making, and how do we ensure and enact equity in all of um, in all of the things that we do. So um, these are public documents and these are statements that the city has has created um, themselves and that we should hold ourselves accountable to both of which happened in 2017 and 2018. And so really what we're going to do today um, is hopefully provide ourselves with an understanding of um, since we said these things, how do we get to show up in this way? Because these are really, really big ideas um, and these are really, but very important um, and it, it can be extremely impactful. We can move on to the next slide. What I want us to understand first um, is that cities don't make statements like these without having an understanding that socially there are systems and there are um, interactions that happen that perpetuate inequality. And by inequality, we mean unequal access to opportunities like the graphic says, but I also want us to think about resources. So I like this graphic a lot because it sort of just shows what happens, right? Is that something is naturally occurring as a tree um, in our minds, right? Uh, can provide unequal opportunities uh, to bearing fruit, um, but also uh, resources, knowing that the fruit and the tree themselves are resources that they could be used to, to, generate, op to generate more opportunities. So on the top left, we see that um, the tree is leaning towards one way. There are plenty of apples or there's plenty of fruit on one side. And um, with no effort really being made, the um, little boy on the left is able to, to receive apples. And so noticing that this is sort of, like I said, naturally occurring or sometimes built purposely in this way, we know that there's inequality. And so the city with the welcome statement, with the um, equity plan is deciding um, that we're going to do something about that. And there's sort of three different approaches to doing something about that, right? And um, sometimes these approaches, depending on the system or depending on the tree, um, are appropriate in different, in different ways. So when we talk about equality, what we mean is that we're going to evenly distribute tools and assistance um, to um, access the opportunities and resources. And while equality sometimes seems like it fits all the time, what we've noticed in this picture is that um, when we don't really fix the when we don't really fix um, the tree, right? When we don't really fix how the resources are being distributed or how they are, um, or, or how they are naturally occurring in our minds, right? We end up providing um, tools um, and enhancing the opportunities or that reach for certain groups and then maybe not for others. So um, on the right side, it seems as if the opportunities and resources are still out of reach, even though they both have received a bag and they both have received a ladder. When we think about equity, it's a customization. So we recognize that yes, the fruits and the opportunities and resources are still out of reach. Um, and so we provide a taller ladder because we know that on the other side of the tree, the ladder or the fruits are just a little bit farther out of reach. 
you see that they're both the same size. And so they would, um, in order for him to reach any of the fruit, that he would need to have uh, a taller ladder to do so. Um, but what we see in equity is that even though we've customized and identified and addressed in the inequality in a way um, that will uh, help reach some opportunities and some resources, the amount of resources um, and opportunities are still not even. So what we think about as a way to, um, to really mitigate all inequality is what we would consider justice. And that's fixing the system. That's creating change that's going to impact um, and allow for tools and resources and opportunities to be distributed in a way that um, there isn't a social indicator or a life experience necessarily that's going to impede upon your ability to access certain things, should you want to, right? So um, the call of action from the city is really to look at the bottom two, the bottom two um, outcomes. What can we do as board members, as city staff, as elected officials, as count, as commissioners, um, to start thinking about how our decisions and how our initiatives either perpetuate and maintain inequality, um, or um, where are the opportunities for us to customize tools, customize tools based on um, the identification of barriers and missed opportunities for um, access of and resources, um, or how do we completely restructure what we do so that when we are um, creating opportunities that all folks are able to reach them, that no one has to climb a higher ladder um, to get fewer resources, but in turn, um, that there is the same climb to get this, that will bear the same amount of fruit. Yes? All right, we can go on to the next one. So how the city is planning to do that is through its equity, its equity action plan, excuse me. Um, this is our response. So what staff do um, annually in, in their, their goal writing session is they create an action item. Um, since I'm technically in the human resources department, I hope Kirsten doesn't mind that I'm putting our one of our goals on as an example, but this is what it is. Um, so what we've done is we uh, have created an action item and we want to create a system of demographic data collection to support equity goals across the city. Um, part of addressing inequality is for us to find it. We need data to support that. We, we already know that inequality exists, but it's hard for us to customize those tools if we don't know who um, or where to customize them. Um, and so what we look at is, a, is several different things. We want to look at um, uh, some data and some community indicators we can have. We want to look at some performance measures. Of course, we need to have someone assigned to doing these things. And then lastly, we want to create checkpoints for ourselves um, so that we can make sure that we're working and, and progressing throughout the year. Um, one of the things that we want to do as well is make sure that we are um, uh, tying this back to our, our equity plan, those four um, commitments that the city has and also the work of the Rising Tides Task Force. Um, so the Rising Tides Task Force also provided some recommendations um, in early 2020 in regards to what we can do um, to push forward equity. Now, this did not just happen, right? Although this work was happening, these conversations were happening, um, we, the, the management team, the M team, went through um, a goal writing little workshop with myself um, and we used a framework to help us get to this place. Um, we used a framework called SMART goals. Um, and as you can see here, SMART, um, how our, our action plan is aligned with a SMART goal, which we'll talk about in a second, is that there needs to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. So we really had to think about how do we get to be in a place where we are accountable, of course, to the equity plan, but we're also accountable to ourselves and to our community um, in a way that is going to be at the end of this you know, work session, or at the end of this time period, we can say, look, this is what we did and this is what we wanted to do and we're measuring our impact. Um, so how this does, how this aligns with SMART is that we are super specific in, um, 
what we wanted to measure. We want to start measuring um, our ability to enact data collection. Um, we wanted to we want to measure um, whether or not um, our infrastructure really is advancing and supporting equity. It's achievable because we're not saying that we're going to, um, you know, not all of the identified barriers or not everything will be measured in one year, but we want to start at least thinking about where can we find systems, what sort of things do we want to measure, and then how do we start to facilitate and publish that to be accountable to the uh, public. And then um, it's relevant um, because uh, we were talking about um, fair and equitable hiring practices as it relates to the equity plan, but then also, again, how do we ensure that we, um, we are facilit that we are committed to an infrastructure that supports and advances equity when we may be, when we're not 100% certain on um, the missed opportunities and barriers to resources that some of our community members have. Uh, we know that it's time bound because this is our 2021 action plan and that we'll have to report on our work um, in 2022 to council. <clears throat> so we can go back to the, can go to the next slide. So again, this is the guidelines for goal setting and the same way that we sort of, I walked through the M team with all of these things, um, boards and commissions, we're going to do the exact same thing. So again, SMART means specific. When we think about goals, when we think about our work, we have to think about who do we want to impact or, or what specifically. This could be a, a group of people. This could be a geography. This could be a lot of different things. Um, but it needs to be specific and pointed and targeted so that um, we can maintain A, the achievability part. We need it to be measurable um, because as we are identifying barriers, as we are identifying ways that we are um, where there's inequality to access in opportunities and resources, um, we need to know whether or not it's working. Um, we need to know that those that are impacted are actually feeling the equity in our decision making. So we have to make some goals um, and measured. And these can be measured in lots of different ways. It can be percent increases. It could be numbers of relationships. It could be all types of things. Um, we don't have to necessarily have uh, data in, um, in just numbers, but also um, in conversations and reputations. Um, achievable, we talk about that as a matter of whether or not we are able to do it, right? Sometimes we have really big goals and ideas, um, but at in a we don't want to um, overinvest, right? Or we can't um, we can't say that we would like to restructure something that we don't have the ability to because it's not within the power of uh, of our our board or commission. There may be structures that are bigger than Golden Valley that um, create inequality. And so we, although we can work towards that, we, ne we won't necessarily have um, the power to change everything. So maybe we don't get to enact justice, but something more like equity or equality. And then timely, um, these are things that are gonna be in your work plan for you know however um, long they last for. So I'm, I'm assuming most folks are about a year. So things that, um, you know, we want to be time bound and we want to be able to look back and say, you know what, we worked on this for six months. Where are we now? And then where can we be in the next six months or in the next year? So, um, these goals, these things that we're talking about, we're going to think about in a way, um, and, and be relevant to that welcome statement and also, um, the 4 commitments of the city's equity plan, um, within each of your board your boards and commissions. So that's another way that we'll make it relevant is that we want it to be an extension of the work that you're already doing. And we can move to the last slide. So what I want you to take away from this is this is just the beginning, um, but you're, the city is accountable to these statements um, regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion. And um, we are committed to dismantling all levels of oppression in all aspects of its work. So as staff, as elected officials, and as board, um, as um, appointed board and commission members. Um, 
you all are going to be responsible for developing a goal in your work plans that align with equity commitments and in the welcome statement. And we're going to use the SMART format to help us do that. And then lastly, um, I will not leave you out to dry. You don't have to come back and watch this little eight minute clip of me talking about this in order to develop your goal. Um, absolutely, uh, I will work with your uh, staff liaisons um, to visit your commission meetings to develop these goals. Um, and we can discuss different ideas of how um, you all can enact equity, diversity and inclusion in your work. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kiara. Um, there, there may be questions for you or, or just uh, uh, more broadly about the evening. And so uh, everybody, we're at the point in the evening where we're going to provide an opportunity for questions and discussion. We'll try to do it as orderly as possible. Um, there are chat opportunities, so if you have questions, uh, put them in the chat. We'll try to monitor the screen. Uh, if there are questions and you want to take yourself off of mute and ask it, uh, I invite uh, anybody who has an answer to feel free to answer the question. So uh, with that, why don't we move into the um the chat and i believe there's a question in there and kirsten maybe you want to yeah. get us started please yeah thank you tim um there was a question and it was a great question something that i didn't mention earlier about the application process for boarding commission members and that is um you know sometimes folks are, don't feel as comfortable or unable or don't have access to using computers um, we do have um, an opportunity for folks to submit an application they can come by to um, right now, it'll be the police department um, to pick up uh, an application at the um, front desk because, um, as you are all probably aware, we're not working in City Hall right now. Um, so we will have applications available at the PD. And no, I didn't ask the chief. I'm just, uh, I'm, but I, I know he's going to be great with it. And uh, and you can drop them off there as well. You can also um, uh, mail. The applications can be mailed to us, and um, we do have. Um, folks checking the mail so they can scan in the applications to where they need to go. Thank you, Kirsten. If there are other questions, uh, please drop them in the chat or uh, take yourself off of mute and, uh, and uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Any, anything, uh, I've got a couple of questions just to maybe prompt some things if, you know, if this helps, but if there are questions about uh, our the city's uh, commitment to equity, and then maybe more specifically how it applies to you as a board member or commissioner, I, I, though I think Kiara did a great job of saying we're we're going to get to that. We'll we'll work with everybody individually, each each uh, board and, and commission. But it, but if you have a thought there, uh, you know, please please feel free to ask it. Say hey, Tim. Yes, sir. It's, it's shot. Um, I just wanted to to encourage members uh, on the commissions and on the boards um, to think creatively, uh, especially when it comes to equity. And especially right now during this time of COVID, it's it's even more challenging. But um, a great example already was the collaboration between the Environmental Commission and the Human Rights Commission, where they had Dr. Mark Seely, uh, who's got the best radio voice in all of Minnesota. Um, he talked about climate change. But he also did have a piece in there about the the impacts, um, not that it's creating disparities, but it's enhancing disparities. It's 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 elevating the disparities in our community and in our communities. Um, and so I think that's a great example of educating our community and trying to look through that lens of equity. And and I don't uh, I don't think any of us believe that that this is like a light switch that suddenly we're going to be able to change this overnight. This is going to take time. Um, it's going to take a lot of practice. And so um, I want to challenge all of you um, to look through that lens of equity. Basically, every time you're you're well for right now when you're hopping online or you're getting on the telephone to be a part of these meetings, as you're clicking on, try to try to think of that word equity. And, and challenge yourself to look through that lens throughout your meeting on a monthly basis. 
um, to think about, are we doing something here um, unintentionally that is perpetuating um, some um, inequalities, some inequities? It's, is, it, um, is it exacerbating the disparity? A great example, I think of when, when Kiara was doing her wonderful presentation, um, you know, there are some things that are beyond our reach, but, you know, she had the T for timely. A great example is the covenants, the racial covenants that, uh, you know, a long time ago, uh, whether it was a planning commission or whatever the, the planning commission of that day was, um, you know, decades ago, um, allowed those covenants to happen, allowed those covenants to be placed on property. Um, fortunately, some changes were made at the state capitol a couple of years ago that then in a timely fashion allowed us, enabled us to jump in and now really educate people and start to make some changes to that. So that's an example, another example. So I just want to challenge all of you guys um, to look at that. And I think there's probably things that we're doing that we don't even realize it, uh, where we're trying to also, um, uh, you know, I, I see Bob Madison here on my on my screen. So I think of Open Space and Recreation Commission. We do have discounts for people who have who are low income, who are challenged financially to participate in our programming. We want to make sure everyone has those opportunities. Um, so some things we're already doing, but you know we got to keep challenging ourselves to think about it. And Denise's question about helping people access those applications is a great example of how we need to keep challenging ourselves. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, other comments, uh, thoughts that people just want to share? We can just have a discussion. Well, I am not seeing uh, any questions in the chat, nor am I hearing any questions. Um, and, and that's okay, that's that's just fine. Uh, maybe we can kind of turn the corner here then and, and head for home. Um, so with that, uh, uh, maybe I would ask uh, the mayor and, and council if, if they're so inclined to wrap up the meeting, if there are some final thoughts that they wish to share. Uh, I will uh, maybe conclude my remarks by re-emphasizing this, uh, uh, this, with this Venn diagram, the concept of, of teamwork. And uh, to me, I, I take the, the teamwork concept very seriously. Uh, and, and I know uh, those who know me well uh, understand that. And, and we are a big team. And, and that's why this meeting is so very important to make sure that we're, um, as Maria Cisnero says, all singing off the same sheet of music. So. Um, so I, uh, th that will be it for me, other than just a huge thank you for, for your time tonight. Uh, Mayor Shep or others? Um, I'll defer to the council for the moment. Uh, anybody on the council, any, any closing comments? Go, go ahead, Larry. Uh, yeah, this is Larry Fauna speaking. Um, it perhaps goes without saying, but um, we have in the model before us here moving forward um, a way forward for our city um, when i first joined council um, there wasn't uh if i may say uh as clear direction as we have today and um i i recognize that early on and i'm i'm grateful to council members to all of the boards and commissions and to our executive team uh, for over the last several years providing direction uh, establishing uh, boundaries to work within and and setting a forward direction for our city uh, when I think of Golden Valley having lived in, in several cities around uh, Minnesota and the country um i think of us as having great potential to be a leader city in the metropolitan area and i think we're well on our way and um the work of the boards and commissions the work of the council and the staff are are helping to pull and push at different times golden valley 
towards, I think, a very bright future, uh, a brighter future than we already are realizing. And so um, I, again, just want to thank the boards and commissions uh, and the members that are on tonight's call. And uh, I hope you will take uh, what you've heard here tonight and uh, take it back to your meetings and incorporate uh, what we hope uh, on council is the enthusiasm and the excitement about the uh, potential for Golden Valley to be even greater than what it is today. Thank you. Well said. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Fonas. Councilmember Rosenquist, please. Well, I can't uh, uh, duplicate what, uh, the eloquence of, of Councilmember Fonas, but I can, I, I just wanted to add that in recognition that 2020 has been a challenging year. And I wanted to thank everybody for stepping up and and dealing with the difficulties of even tonight, getting on board and getting on a virtual meeting, uh, doing things differently, adapting, pivoting, being innovative. Um, it's been a challenging year for many people personally and professionally as well. And your commitment to boards and commissions in light of that is especially appreciated. So uh, thank you for hanging with us and continuing the work, the everyday work of Golden Valley and the extraordinary work that 2020 and the challenges of, of not only a pandemic, but of systemic racism and all the other kinds of things that have been happening this year. Um, we've been able, I think, in Golden Valley to model what government should be and can be. Right by continuing to have respectful discussions, continuing to do the good work that we do, um, and um, and for me, that's that that brings a great deal of optimism uh, for our bright future. Thank you. Kimberly, Maurice, anything you guys want to say? Or are you good? Sure, I can jump in. Um, I guess the only thing I would add, I fully support everything that's already been said. Um, since applications are being accepted now for the commissions, I would encourage everyone to tell your friends and neighbors to apply. A lot of people don't really know about the commissions or aren't really aware of the application process. So if you talk to friends and neighbors um, and kind of, you know, offer to answer their questions about it or refer them to the city's website, that could go a really long way in, in getting some some great new applicants for the commissions and boards. Councilmember Sandberg, thank you so much for saying that. Um, one of the things that our communications team has been working um, on is creating toolkits, communication toolkits for folks. Um, I know we um, sent out. Um, you should have received one from your liaison about promoting the event for tonight and. Um, we'll continue to try to do those things. So you'll be seeing more information from us and um, in, in the form of those toolkits. And we really appreciate you sharing that with your, your networks, your neighbors um, to uh, on, on all these important topics, so. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you, Councilmember Sandberg. Thank you, Councilmember Rosenquist. Mayor Shep, you wanna tie this up in a bow? Sure, I'll just, uh, Councilmember Harris. I could just ditto. Um, everyone says, um, <clears throat> and again, just thank you all for the work um, that you guys do. It's really important as a council, we look to you guys to help help us make, make decisions and you always do a fantastic job. And, you know, as everyone else before me says so eloquently, uh, really encourage people to apply for board commission. Um, it's really great work as you all know, and just have great people in this community to get back um, to finally do so. So thank you again. Yeah, and I'll just um, add to that uh, everything that's been said. I really do appreciate your time tonight. I want to thank our fantastic staff. You know, I use words just over and over again. Fantastic, amazing, super. You saw me put stuff in the chat about our commissions. That includes our staff. And uh, I, I know I overuse those words a lot, but it really does. Uh, it, it really does fit. We've got some phenomenal staff and um, appreciate their taking their time day and night, and even sometimes weekends. Uh, as, as we know, water mains don't take a break uh, when they decide to freeze over and burst on, uh, on, on weekends. They don't, they don't take the weekends off. Uh, I'm sure uh, firefighter Ron Bloom can, can attest to that, uh, especially, my gosh, this time of year, 
Anyone want to complain? Try getting out there with Ron and trying to coil up a frozen uh, a frozen hose, right? So uh, everyone's doing a lot of hard work. Um, but uh, so thank you to our staff. I, I want to say thank you. I think Destiny. I think you're our only senior student who's on the line tonight. Uh, if we don't get a chance, thank you. Good luck with graduation. Uh, I, I've already told Destiny. I'll share it with everyone else. The only reason why we're letting her move on to college. So she promises to come back and be mayor of Golden Valley in the future um, because she's just outstanding. And uh, I, I want to say thank you to our commission members for working with our students and encouraging them to feel valued and be a part of the process uh, because we're going to need new students uh, next year. We've got some who will return, but we're going to need some new ones. So please keep your eyes and ears and open uh, eyes and, and ears open for uh, new students to recruit. Um, and the final thing I just wanted to say is I want to go back to that word challenge. Um, I know I mentioned challenging you to look through the lens of equity, um, but I also want to challenge you continuously on how we, whether it's your commission, whether it's your board, um, whether it's us as a council, us as a community, how we, how can we continue to be welcoming, uh, as welcoming as possible um, to, to use our creativity even during the time of COVID. And uh, frankly, some of you guys have stepped up to the plate. And thank you so much. I mean, we've come, come up with some creative messages, messaging and videos that we as a council have done. Some of you have done as commission members and we've put that on our website. We've put it out on social media and it's because you guys are thinking creatively, creatively. So thank you. Uh, and I, I want to continue to challenge you guys to step up and think creatively in those in that respect as well. So uh, hopefully the, the pep speech is, is good. You're feeling good. You're feeling all warmed up and excited to get down to work uh, for the rest of 2021. And uh, hopefully we'll all just get together later this year. Uh, we can all run or walk together or cheer others on at the, the Human Services Commission's Run the Valley and, uh, and maybe an open space program as well. Uh, you name it. Uh, maybe we'll all just crash a planning commission meeting just for the heck of it, just because we can all actually be together in person. Um, although I gotta say, Sophia made the BZA meeting sound really exciting. So maybe that that'll be that'll be our our next step. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. You've been wonderful. You guys stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves. Let us know if you need help. You're not out there on your own. If you need meals, you need other help. Let us know.